Good morning from London's Hyde Park, the Serpentine behind us, and Mike Isherwood Hi. Uh, with me this morning. Mike, pleasure to be here. Uh, what promises to be a dry walk around um, uh, Hyde Park over the next few minutes. Let's hope um, so. Let's, <laughs> let's carry on down here. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, uh, you are currently um, uh, undertaking a major um, charitable uh, challenge. Mm. Um, I've stumbled over quite the, uh, the the terminology that you've used for yourself uh, in, set, in in taking on this challenge. So I'll leave it to you, if I may, to. Uh, so to, yeah, to explain it. <laughs> so so slight tongue twister in what you've described yourself. It, or it, it yourself is yeah. Like. So I, I was looking for for an, uh, an appropriate um, name. I just came up with 10k a day guy because uh, I'm running 10 kilometers every single day of 2022. So it's not that much of a tongue twister. You'd think I'd be able to say 10k a day guy uh, yeah. um, quite <laughs> quite easily. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit more about this. What is it that you're doing and who are you raising funds for? Okay, so, well, um, the, the purpose behind it was uh, the, the, the troubling uh, situation that we have with uh, mental health within the emergency services so um, uh, uh, police fire ambulance coast guard and the various agencies uh, that support them and um, uh, there are way too many suicides that happen each year we we sadly lose on average one colleague a week to suicide um, and you know that's these, a remarkable number isn't it it is it's it's way too many in fact one would be too many but one a week is is just simply awful to suicide that to suicide yeah yeah and um uh, around about well there's several thousand leave citing mental health as the reason uh, for them leaving the service and these are people that obviously are supporting us every single day um of of uh, of the year and um and often supporting us in in our darkest times so you know, I'm, what I'm trying to do is show them support in their darkest times too. So, uh, uh, you're raising money for Mind. Yes. And how can people, we'll come back to it a little later and we'll also include the, the details on the, the notes on Policing TV when uh, we publish this, but how can people um, contribute to your fundraising effort? Well, uh, the, 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 main, the main way is, is to, to share awareness of, of the issue and to encourage people to talk. So on each of my posts, so I post a video every single day of my runs, um, and I talk about all different aspects of mental health, both you know my own, but also um, other mental health challenges that exist. Um, so liking, following, sharing, subscribing to those messages and, and getting it out there as broadly as possible is my main aim. I am raising money at the same time through Just Giving. Uh, and all of those funds go directly to uh, to to Mind and Mind Blue Light, uh, which is which is there to support mental health uh, uh, within the emergency services. So, um, if you can give, great. But if not, then please do please do share the message because that's the most important thing. So we'll come on to your background in in public safety um, shortly. You you have a, a career that is um, quite heavily focused on on public safety. When we were talking a little earlier uh, at the cafe by the Serpentine, you told me about what it is, what it, why it is you think that you have this passion for public safety. So, just now the camera's rolling. Just yeah. tell me again about that, and tell tell our viewers about that. Yeah. So, uh, so very very early, one of one of my earliest memories actually of the emergency services in general was um, being pulled from the first floor of my uh, home by a. A, a, a fire, a fireman on a ladder, uh, and I just remember these huge outstretched arms saying, um, "It's okay, um, I, I've got you. You're safe." Age the house, four, you age, said. I was about four years old. Yes, uh, so being pulled out of a window by a fireman, and uh, all of our family made it out safe, thankfully. But uh, yeah, uh, that was my earliest memory. But uh, also um, a, a demonstration of a police dog chasing after. Uh, a, uh, a person with a big pillow on his arm. This Alsatian shot off and, and uh, grabbed hold of this guy and brought him down. Uh, I was maybe uh, uh, six or seven at that time. Uh, yes, yeah, so I remember, remember that. Uh, and I also mentioned 
the uh, the police and uh, uh, the uh, ambulance service responding when my uh, sister was knocked over uh, with a group of her friends knocked over by a drunk driver that had mounted the pavement uh, so you know all of these kind of memories of the emergency services supporting us in in, in troubled times and uh, educating us as well um, I, I guess kick-started a bit of a passion for me it's it's you know it's, it's perhaps not that remarkable that these formative experiences in, in, in our youth contribute to the the person that we are in our adult life and you you've got quite you know strong memories of, of age four and six then that, yes. that are, uh, are readily brought back yeah. so um, you um, but then, having had those those memories, you then went off and became a table tennis pro for a I short did. while. I did, yes, yeah, um, yeah. It, it seems like somewhat of a uh, a, a random uh, direction to take, but yeah, I uh, my, my father was um, working very long hours, and uh, he wanted to spend more time with us as uh, as, as kids, and um, uh, table tennis was just one of those. It was a local club. Uh, I, I, I went and I played and within a few years I was um, number three in the country and I was representing my country and uh, uh, I, I kind of, well I was 16, moved to Germany. Um, Took it on tour around Europe. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I was really, really fortunate to have the experiences that I had. Um, I even ate dinner with the uh, uh, royal family in Saudi Arabia. Really? Uh, as we were... We as part training. of your ten table tennis pro yeah. uh, duties, yeah. as it were. Yeah, yeah, we we, we were training their um, uh, their Olympic team. So uh, yeah, it's some some amazing experiences, and I'm yeah, I'm truly grateful for that. Yeah. And then from uh, having having then decided to move uh, away from table tennis, you did move into um, uh, uh, public safety, um, which led in due course to your being the. Uh, I think the CEO for APD yes. uh, in based in Hull and um, with APD having quite a presence in the UK control room yeah. market so um, tell me about that that experience um, uh, ha how you got to APD and then the 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 time whilst you were with APD yeah so um I, I, I started my career in, in, in technology and um, it was actually in, in internal, internal sales and I kind of worked my, worked my way uh, uh, through a company called Lynx Technology and, and, uh, 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 and in various other companies and eventually ended up at APD and there's a bit of a connection there uh, from early on in my career. Uh, with, uh, uh, with Lynx Technology was part of the Lynx Group and APD uh, used to be part of the Lynx Group as well. So uh... these things um, again, I'm sure that many people can uh, can think of uh, coincidences in their in their own careers where, um, in, in your case, you found that um, the um, the board that was interviewing you for the APD job were people that you had. Um, worked with some 20 years before, yeah. albeit you being in a much more junior capacity. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and they're being unaware until you came into the room. Yes, that's right. But actually, yeah. it was you that was um, interviewing for the job as, as chief executive. That's uh, right, yeah. yeah. So. But, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to join APD was because uh, they, they, they worked within the public safety industry and produced technology for the control room. Um, they had a great product, um, but uh, you know, they, they, I think they, they kind of lost their way a little bit in, in terms of um, the, uh, the, the whole purpose behind the company because, you know, for me, the purpose of a company uh, uh, within the public safety industry is first and foremost to think of technology as a tool and to produce the best tool possible to support those, um, those people within public safety that use the tool to save lives. And, um, you know, at the time, I certainly felt that certainly some of the senior management had forgotten that. And so we re re rediscovered that and we re uh, rekindled the flame, really. And uh, we went from 30% market share in, in the UK uh, to about 70% market share in about two and a half years. So this was roughly 2015 through to 2018, that Correct, sort of yeah. time? Yeah, yeah. And, and that, w that wasn't done by a huge, you know, 
sales effort. It was done by remembering the purpose behind uh, the company when it was founded by uh, a chap called Alan uh, Winfield, Professor Alan Winfield. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was focused, uh, we, we focused the company on supporting the emergency services. And um, you know that that to me is it was the secret behind its, its uh, success. I'm just going to take the opportunity. Let's pause for a second, and I'm just going to pan round um, this part of Hyde Park. And um, in the distance, we have what appears to be a rehearsal for um, uh, some future uh, London events, where um, we we have. Uh, horses and and cannon, uh, the cavalry, um, Hyde Park just um, uh, where the bus and the traffic is. That's the Hilton Hotel in the distance there, and some building work. Um, so these members of the uh, armed forces, all public servants as well. Let's carry on walking mm -hmm. down here. Fascinating to to see here in pretty much the centre of London, in this green space in the centre of London, um, the, 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 the evidence of these rehearsals for um, events that we've been missing for these last couple of years. We're, we're yeah. now, it seems, coming well out of, of lockdown and the, the uh, impact of, of the pandemic. Um, back to your, your own experiences. Um, so you uh, have now uh, you've you've moved on from APD. APD has um, been um, uh, sold to uh, a, 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 another company. Yep. You stayed with APD for a couple of years whilst um, uh, the transfer was taking place, um, and and you now um, you have two, uh, well, three arguably with your charitable work, um, um, two stroke three. Um, lines that you particularly pursue. One as uh, the chair of a um, key BAPCO uh, committee and one as uh, the uh, the owner of Softball uh, Limited. Yep. Um, let's talk about that. Which which would you like to cover first, do you think? Oh, let's cover, let's cover British APCO. Um, uh, so, uh, the acronym, of, yeah. just I, I, yeah, let's, let's, let's tell the remind me, yeah, remind so, me of the acronym. Uh, so, so uh, APCO is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a worldwide association um, uh, uh, and it's the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials. Um, effectively, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a charitable uh, organisation around the world and um, and what we do is we work with industry and we work with um, technology companies and, uh, and our focus is on the development of, uh, of, of, of uh, technology and uh, organisational partnerships within the public safety industry, um, in, including the emergency services. So uh, we do our best as a, an organisation to um, uh, develop the right uh, policies, uh, to try and connect a lot of the technology businesses together because a lot of them because they compete sometimes they compete to the detriment of so the, this is the uh, public safety organization this is this is a way of bringing those um to who have an interest in public safety and um uh, that side of things and the technology associated with it to bring them together in a a, a friendly manner to uh, to, to, to work together as best they can. Um, I'm just going to take again this opportunity to pan round and, and remark on uh, the, the view that we have uh, at this time of, of the preparations for some major event, and I know quite not what. Mike, come down this side. We'll carry on a little further, but I'll just uh, put you in the background uh, now to, yep. to this. Um, so uh, that's, that's your work with, with BAPCO, and... Um, uh, before we come on to uh, your work now with your own uh, company, Softable, um, we haven't yet mentioned the Control Room Awards, which um, you had a major role in setting up yeah. uh, some time ago, and now you're leading on the, uh, the way in which the Control Room Awards are taken forward. So yeah. tell us about the Control Room Awards. Um, so it was co-founded by uh, myself and uh, a lady called Rhiannon Beeson and um, 
it, it, it was born out of uh, many visits to the control room where uh, we, we saw the amazing work that, that they do, um, but there was really a, a distinct lack of uh, recognition, especially national recognition for the work that they do. Um, pretty much all emergencies start with a phone call. Uh, and um, and they're the ones that were talking people through, you know, how to, let's say, um, save a choking baby, or uh, in uh, uh, in a house fire, how to you know get get yourself into a safe position in order for colleagues that were uh, responding to the event to be able to to uh, to, to save them, um, and, um, and and many other things that that I could talk you through. Uh, amazing uh, acts. Uh, of bravery and and they you know they they literally take one call after another after another um you know with with not too many breaks in between the, the, really the point of first contact in many yeah. emergencies in many situations yeah and and really uh, control room staff um, setting the um, setting the direction and the setting the tone for the nature of the response that the emergency services provide yeah, uh, absolutely, and they do a phenomenal job. Uh, they really do, and it's and it's uh, and, and it's a very hard. It takes it, it, it's it's toll on them uh, as individuals. And um, and so we set up the control room awards to uh, recognise uh, that amazing work that they do. Uh, and that's where that's where it came from. I'd, I'd like to go back. To, to, so let's tie that in with with your work on. Um, raising awareness um, of, of uh, mental health matters, um, the, the charitable work you're doing with, with MIND. Um, you, again, um, thinking a little earlier to our, our coffee before we started this, this uh, recording, you, you mentioned to me three elements that um, really provide some clue as to the um, state of mind, the mental state of mind of, of those not just in control rooms, but more generally. Um, yeah. And, you know, quite use, very useful pointers here. So <laughs> yeah. what are those three items that you mentioned to me? Uh, yeah, uh, so it actually, it, it came from noticing the, the, the behaviours within the, <laughs> within the control room. Uh, so the three, the three things, if I bullet point them, are uh, food, uh, uh, toilet and humour. Uh, so I'll talk you through those, those, I, those three when things. When you said they, to uh, toilet earlier on, I, was, I, I wondered where this was going. But yeah, I, I feel yeah. we're on fairly safe ground, so yeah. do carry on. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it always raises a smile. But, you know, the serious message behind it is, um, you know, when, when people are, uh, are feeling an immense amount of mental strain and stress, um, uh, the, this is when these three things come into play. So food... Uh, you generally turn to comfort food, so uh, you know sugary sweets, fizzy sweets, uh, you know uh, uh, full fat coke, uh, and um, uh, and uh, you know marshmallows, chocolate, all of those kinds of things. You turn to those things for comfort, and the reason for that is because uh, the body's stress response is to um, to increase levels of what's called cortisol, which is a uh, the, the the stress hormone. Uh, and so your body starts to crave these kind of sugary foods. And so when you see someone increasingly turning to that kind of uh, food group, then they are generally, they've got raised levels of cortisol, so they're experiencing a great deal of stress. So the second thing, toilet. Um, the number of times I've been in an, uh, an emergency services control room, you know, listening into to calls and, um, you know, uh, sat down with force incident managers and and then I just take a short toilet break and I can hear as I as I walk in uh, muffled crying uh, and people generally go when they've had a very stressful call uh, or maybe a run of them back to back they do go into the toilets and they cry that's their release and a um, place of some privacy some privacy yes um, uh, and, and it's and it's the way that they cope. So if you start to see people that are increasingly going more and more to the to the toilet, it may be to cry, but you know the, also the, another. It raises questions. Yeah, it raises questions, but you know you do get increases in in bowel movements and things like that when you are under a great deal of stress and strain. The third thing to notice is 
uh, humour. Now we know that the emergency services type of humour, because of the things that, that they get involved with, uh, is, is quite a dark, uh, a, quite a dark type of humour anyway. But what you generally find is that, again, when people have, have been undergoing a lot of stress and strain over a prolonged period of time, without um, talking to people, uh, you know, professionals, that they'll turn to very dark humour, increasingly dark humour. And it's at this point when, you know, again, you should suggest that, that uh, if you see a colleague like that, that they reach out to Mind Blue Light or, or um, uh, Occupational Health, uh, whomever, or maybe just be, be there for them to listen. Or maybe you're noticing this in yourself. You know, that's the time when you need to reach out uh, for help. So those three things, food, toilet, humour. So that, that does tie in with, with your um, 10K a day guy. Yes. Um, um, awareness and, and fundraising. Um, now, Softable, that's, that's your current company. Um, it's some, a company you set up um, having left uh, APD. What does Softable do? So, uh, the, the, the name Softable comes from uh, making software capable. Uh, so, it's all about, it's all about technology, because technology is a real passion of mine. Um, and I believe that, that, that uh, software is incredibly powerful uh, as a tool. And, uh, you know, like APD, there are so many companies out there that have uh, great software, but maybe they're not quite sure how to make it the best software on the market or how to take it to market or how to move into new markets. So uh, the, the company is effectively uh, myself and a bunch of other uh, consultants that I work with that help uh, technology companies to engage with their communities, to develop their software uh, and, and and to move into new markets uh, and ultimately to achieve the same kind of growth that, that I've achieved with with uh, APD and formerly System Q and, and before that the Western Group and BT and and the other companies that that I've helped uh, to to grow. Um, so that's why I set up the company is to help other software companies to produce the best tools. The, and, and traveling, I think, worldwide um, at, at, as part of that. So, yes. so um, not quite yet meeting the, the Saudi royal family again, but maybe that's in the, uh, that's, that's in the, in the stars, as it were. Um, let's, so, let's pause here because, again, we've moved into a different part of Hyde Park now. We've, we've lost the... Um, the pomp and ceremony of the preparations. We have here uh, very much a tree uh, covered uh, area. We have just a short distance down here, the, the serpentine uh, once again. Um, I'm going to suggest, Mike, we head back to the cafe now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I am rather partial to ice cream, so we might even see if we can find an ice cream or something uh, there. But. It's been a pleasure walking with you here in, in Hyde Park. Mike, Mike Isherwood, thank you so much for your time uh, as part of the Policing Friendship Tour and for Policing TV. Thank you very much. Thank you.